Well, welcome back to the QP Buckeye Insider from South Florida with Garrett Sear and I'm Mark Coates as we continue to talk Buckeye offense. Jim Trussell's offense kind of would take a bit of a beating every November as he would kind of dial things down and stick to the running game. And Trussell would always talk about how they'd end up playing Illinois in November and he had to run the ball because of the wind. And it's all supposed to change with Urban Meyer and Tom Horn's offense, yet it kind of didn't change, particularly this season. They we talked about the struggles Braxton Miller had thrown the ball, but it, it almost was conceptually they went away from throwing the ball a little bit and stuck it to the ground. Well, it, with Jim Trestle, it was, we'll do whatever it takes to win the game this week. So if we have to run the ball 45 times, we'll run the ball 45 times. And that's kind of the same thing with Urban Meyer. They're prepared to do whatever it takes. And, and you're right, they did go away from the passing game a little bit. And I think it kind of goes back to when Urban Meyer first got the job. The wide receivers had been a little lackluster when he first started. And I, I believe the phrase was clown show. Yeah, yeah it was. He, he was not impressed. Uh, is an understatement. And I think they kind of regressed a little bit down the season. Uh, they, they still had that deep play ability, but there was no really intermediate or short passing game. And I think if you're going to get four yards throwing the ball, you might as well just get four yards, turn around, and hand it off to Carlos Hyde because the strength of the offensive line was run blocking. And you just kind of go with what's worked. And I think uh, I think they recognize that they got away from the passing game. And I think that's something that they've tried to work on here since they've got to South Florida. You mentioned the intermediate short passing game that a lot of times goes to the tight ends. And Tom Herman today said Jeff Hyreman's had one of his best practices recently. Of course, Hyreman had a huge game at Purdue. And, and again, they kind of went away from him a little bit. And certainly another member of the offense that was maybe a little bit MIA, particularly against Michigan in the Michigan State Big Ten Championship game, was Dontre Wilson, the electrifying freshman who maybe didn't quite live up to the hype that he had gotten coming into this season, but Herman says that's not, not, not necessarily because of what uh, Dontre Wilson did or didn't do, but because of how good the rest of the offense has evolved without Dontre Wilson. Probably did not evolve into the complete player that, that we thought that he would be, so uh, I think kind of the, the term we used early in the year was uh, more of a novelty when he was in, and so we needed him to be a more every down player and was slower to progress in that area and then to be quite honest with you we thought we would need him and by need I mean need need him to to win more games and to score points and at the end of the day you've got what we believe is the, the best offensive line in the country you've got one of the top two or three running backs in the country you've got a quarterback in Braxton Miller that I mean, these guys were touching the football, and, and I mean, really good things were happening to us offensively. And so, um, you, you hate to disrupt that rhythm a little bit. And uh, um, so, and and we've told, we've talked to Dontre about that. It's certainly not a wasted year by any stretch of the imagination with his kick return yards and um, rush yards and receiving yards. It's a, a very productive season for a true freshman. Um, and uh, you know, I think he's got a thousand all-purpose shards or close to it and and uh, you know another year in the weight room and in off-season training and training you know at kind of both positions uh, you know slot receiver and, and running back will uh, increase his his value and production as, as we move forward in his career I, I think we evolved kind of uh, separate phases if you will um, I think we certainly made some dramatic improvements throwing the football from, from where we were last year and uh, through the middle part of the season. I think that showed. I think we regressed maybe a little bit um, as, um, you know, our bodies got fatigued and we started losing a, a little bit of numbers on the perimeter and guys were playing more snaps and playing banged up. and. Um, you know, the competition got tougher a little bit too, and so. Um, but the the beauty of it, is, I mean, we're we're not going to change who we are. We're we're not uh, um, we're not going to throw the football 50 times a game. But we we did feel like after last season we needed to to throw it more effectively and efficiently. And I I think we uh, started that process again. I, I think we might have taken a step or two back, which allowed us some things to work on during bowl prep. Um, but we're we're a downhill uh, inside zone two back run team that just happens to do it from the shotgun and, and add the quarterback run as as part of the element and um, you know but we felt like last year teams were able to kind of crowd the line of scrimmage on us and and make it really really difficult to 
to maintain that identity. And uh, I think having at least an eff effective, um, productive passing game has allowed us to continue that mode of operation. Garrett, you have time, extra time to prepare. What do you think Ohio State's going to do offensively come Friday night? Well, I think they're definitely going to run the football. I think they're looking at, in my opinion, it looks like they're trying to get between 65 to 80 snaps. So they, a lot of criticism has been that they ha have moved too slowly for a no-huddle offense. And that I, I talked to Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator from Clemson, and he said, you know, if you can negate how fast they line up and how fast uh, they snap the ball and let our guys get in position, that they're mentally tough enough and understand the game of football that they're going to be okay so I think they need to up the tempo a little bit and I think they're they're definitely going to be able to use the play action pass because Clemson's defense they're number one in the country in tackles for loss so they want to get up the field and they want to get penetration I think you have to use that aggressiveness against them in the play action passing game to, to really uh, exploit their their uh, weaknesses their linebackers are they're okay. I mean, their defensive line is great. Their defensive backfield is pretty good. Their linebackers are okay. You try to get them to come up. You try to fake them out, and I think there could be some big plays from the Buckeye offense. As we're in here right now, Ohio State taking on this Clemson defense, and even though it's been a little bit shellacked, it's been vulnerable against the rushing attack, Ohio State has a lot of respect for this Clemson D. As I watch the film, they're front seven, and, you know, they're, they're real. You know, there's some real dudes up there. You know, they got some uh, some great interior D linemen and some outside D linemen, you know, that, that, that fly off the ball. You know, their linebackers play great with the D line. You know, they all click together, you know, so that ties in with the safeties, you know, coming down and fitting in and run support. So, you know, they all play together, like I just said earlier, you know. So, you know, it's usually a tough game when the defense plays together. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you can always use tempo. You know, if, 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 if you're going against a tempo offense like us, where you do a lot, we do a lot of hurry up, uh, try to try to tire the defense down. It's, it's hard for the defense to do a lot of blitzes and, and really try to do what they do if, if we're um, doing a lot of hurry up stuff just to get them tired. And on top of that, you're blitzing, you'll be more tired. So I think, like I said, Coach Herman's doing a really good job of game planning. So, um, Whatever the final game plan is, I, I think it's going to be a great one, and I think if we execute it well, we'll be good. Uh, I'm sure Corey will tell you they also have you know some very good inside players, and you know uh, good motors like I mentioned earlier. They're very good with their hands and they play hard, and I think that's you know something that makes any D line you know effective, and you know they're no different. So it doesn't surprise me to hear that stat that they're high up there in TFLs, and uh, you know like I said, we got to be prepared to play against a good a good bunch of players, and I think we will be. Uh, the film that I saw their uh, their defense, you know, is pretty sharp. You know, they fly to the ball. You know, they don't make too many mistakes. And, you know, and they play. You know, they play together. You know, when you're playing against a defense that plays together, you know, it's usually a tough game. So, looking forward to it. Defense here on this Cupid Buckeye Insider from South Florida.